Hello, welcome back to the library. Let's jump right into it. You know, the internet can be a pretty brutal place sometimes, especially when it comes to social media and sharing our libraries and collections. The need for validation, or worse, superiority amongst our peers can take a real toll on someone's self-worth. I'm here to tell you that your game collection doesn't define you. It can only celebrate you. After seeing so much poppycock on the internet when it comes to someone's library of games, it's high time we celebrate every collection out there, presented in no particular order. Number one, the vacuum cleaner. The vacuum librarian buys anything and everything, literally. They fill shelves for the visual splendor of seeing it all. No game is left behind regardless of condition because if it plays, it stays. Vacuum cleaners are the very core of the hobby, making sure all types of retail stock are purchased and allowing stores to carry what they can. Vacuum cleaners are also the most likely to be lawful good resellers, swooping up one store's stale stock and giving it new life in online trading communities or discount bins at conventions. Number two, hidden simplicity. The simple librarian does not need the fancy. They're completely fine with cart only, disc only, and usually condense everything into a CD folder or storage device that blends in with their surroundings. They rightfully feel no shame in buying digital games due to the simplicity and less clutter. For them, gaming is an escape and a secret place. You could be at their house a thousand times and never know they were a gamer unless they accidentally left a controller out or a system in view. Their libraries are often enjoyed while under a comfy blanket and warm beverage at their side, with a loyal pet sleeping next to them. Like the worlds they digitally explore, their collection is just as well a hidden paradise. 3. The Exclusives Club This one has been around forever, and it is probably the oldest library type of them all. The exclusive library is that which only exists on one console or computer. The games in the library just can't be had any other way, legally speaking, so you pick up the matching system to play them. In the Game Rave household, the Switch brandishes that name tag. We bought it on launch so Becky could have her Zelda and murder me in Bomberman R. Since that day, it's just been the exclusives that we've bought for it, as everything else we'd want is in a much better form on the PlayStation 5 or the PC. Ain't nothing wrong with an exclusive library, especially if you can work it into satellite collecting. See this video if you don't know what I'm talking about. Number four, strictly digital. I know this one's gonna ruffle some feathers, but it needs to be said. That all digital or mostly digital libraries, despite their dangers, can be celebrated the same way as any physical library. In the modern world, convenience is key. And I know far too many people who rightfully prefer not having to get up and switch media when they're in the middle of a game night. There is nothing to misplace. You save shelf space. And if you're the traveling type, everything is in one box in one bag. Easy peasy. Second, especially today's world, unless it's a physical game of the uh, physical game of the year edition, where everything patches it all are on the disc, the real world copy is just an incomplete piece of the puzzle. Might as well just enjoy the digital copy for now, and if they do release a physical all-in-one down the road, snag it again for safekeeping, and support the company twice. Number five, focused. The focused librarian maintains the collection that is highly specific to their tastes. While a straggler or single random game may not fit, everything else is tied to a theme. They could have every role-playing game ever released, or perhaps every game from a certain series. Focused librarians are also appreciative of the ephemera that comes with those games. Licensed products like t-shirts, toys, novels, and anything that helps them learn more about their favorite worlds and characters are gleefully purchased and consumed. They're also usually the most die-hard fans, buying games on day one to support their favorite developers and publishers, sometimes without ever owning the system to play it on. Number six, the full set acquisition type. It doesn't matter if every game is played or not, the only need is the completion of the task. The joy of finding a needed game in the wild is second only to the joy of knowing that they're that much closer to the end goal, one of every game on a platform. For acquisition librarians, the tales of game hunting are as much a part of their library as the physical items are. Their journey weaves in and out of stories shared over communal dinners or waiting in a multiplayer lobby. Where their legends are forged in the hunt, their counterpart, the Providence Librarian, lets the games speak for themselves. Number seven, the Providence Library. 
One of the more respectable libraries, the Providence Collection treasures the visual history of the game as much as the actual content. Cartridges still proudly bear shiny rental security stickers, and game discs have scratch shields and at a minimum three barcode tags. Manuals bear the mileage of missing or torn pages, food stains, or worse, cracks in a cartridge shell. There is no box in their collection with eight perfect corners in their collection, and God help you if you think one of them has everything it came with. But none of that matters, because all those details are memories of locations now long gone, ghosts of gaming's past life when everything was simple and easily accessible. Rental stores long gone, chain retailers forever removed from the ether, or even just something as simple as a child's name marked on the back of the cartridge. Every blemish isn't a scar, but a small glimpse into the life that game lived, and most of them live well. Providence collectors are the unsung heroes, taking in the gaming equivalent of the orphan children no one wants and loving them as if they were brand new. Number 8. Full Set Exploration Where the acquisition hunter needs one of every game to fulfill their quest, the exploration hunter needs them all because they must be explored and played. Every game has a story to tell, no matter what that game is. Explorers will often take their collecting to a higher level, sharing their experiences with others through videos, blog posts, providing insight where there was none, and wringing out every possible tidbit from a game, no matter the time sink. Explorers are the backbone of the collecting community, and often helping each other so more information can be brought to light. They often forgo other game systems and playtime to focus on their one particular set of games. Their journey is often never completed, as new paths are forged and new outlets to research keep popping up. Number 9. Patience. Their motto is no game is ever purchased for full retail value. Only the game of the year edition or gold edition, where everything was provided, provided on day one, exists on their shelves. Their Steam libraries are endless fields of amazing games all bought for pennies on the dollar. Every second playing a game for them is a second worth far more on the return than the initial investment. They've never been to a midnight release, and they never will need to be at one. Patience librarians are the one-ups of the gaming world. They give games a second life when the core fan base has already moved on, having played it a year or two prior. Their methods help provide developers with extra income late in the timeline of their next project. Number 10. The Casuals Casual libraries are often the butt of jokes, but they are the very lifeblood of the industry. And I will repeat that. Without casual librarians, we don't have an industry, we don't have a hobby, and we certainly don't have the games we love. Never, ever let someone who calls themselves a collector tell you that they're the most important consumer in the hobby. Call of Duty, Madden, Assassin's Creed, literally almost anything Nintendo puts out are the games everyone gets to play and enjoy. Casual libraries do not need deep cuts, rare oddities, or expensive editions. They are filled with games all fulfilling their purpose to be played, enjoyed, and shared with others. Casual libraries encompass all the good things about gaming. Local multiplayer, family-friendly, some games for the parents, some games just for the kids, all of it living under one roof. Games come in all varieties, both condition-wise and subject matter. And they're all loved and played. Now, this was just a small sampling of what's out there in the big, beautiful world. All of them have a place at the table. As you can tell from the B-roll, many of them can live under one roof. I know it can be intimidating in a world where the almighty like button and view count can unjustly determine someone's authority on the subject matter or the true value of their game collection, but that's all bullshit. It's your library that you have cultivated and made. Cherish it. Revel in it. Play the living snot out of it and show it off. It doesn't matter if it's one game or a thousand. The real problem is not being able to separate the need for public validation from the actual value provided for the content. So much of what we view on YouTube is at the extreme ends of the content. People spend exorbitant amounts of money on items when they don't need to, others overemphasize an opinion for the sake of the algorithm, or even worse, clout chasers as far as the eye can see. How many people have you witnessed spend insane amounts of money to have the it thing and only then slowly watch it all disappear. Or worse, sell it all off for pennies on the dollar 
do they didn't pay attention to bills and car payments. At 47 years old, I've seen everything across almost the entire history of this hobby. Far too few people are asking, what does this gameplay like with a new find? And there are way too many people asking, is it worth anything? Oh my God, I just need something to brag about and feel good. Your whole library, no matter the size or shape it takes, is worth what you put into it time-wise. And that real value is playing and enjoying them. No one cares what you paid for them or how much they're worth. The real fortune is in telling people how they lived. And in an active library, they live eternally. All right, guys, tell me about your collection in the comment section. I want to hear everything. I will see you guys at the Midwest Gaming Classic in two weeks. Be safe and play games. I'll see you then. Take care.